Okay, good afternoon. Um, let's go ahead and start off this second episode of our new podcast called Miami Medical Gym. I'm Jose Almeida, and uh, today um, uh, joined by Dr. Julian Javier. Uh, we've been buddies for 20 plus years. Uh, he was a uh, here in Miami, when we first met, uh, we were both at the Miami Cardiac and Vascular Institute. Uh, he's a cardiologist, interventional cardiologist. I'm a vascular surgeon. Um, and he's since moved to Naples and has been practicing there for, for some time now. We've done a bunch of stuff together. Uh, we've done uh, training courses. Uh, he's from the Dominican Republic. And uh, we were there about 10 years doing training courses and doing clinical trials. We had a device company together. Um, and both of our practices, uh, have now, well, for a few years now, but even more so now developing a wellness side of the practice. Uh, so I'm going to let him introduce himself in a minute here, but uh, the focus of today is medical weight loss. Uh, why people have problems with weight loss. We touched on this last week uh, when my sister was on with me as a gut specialist. Uh, we'll get into some of the things that can help us accelerate uh, weight loss for patients. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's good habits need to be uh, implemented uh, and, and thought of as a lifestyle uh, adoption instead of you know just a weight loss or another fad diet. So with that, Julian, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and we'll get us rolling here. Yeah, sure, Jose. Thanks uh, for having me here in this fascinating uh, topic. And uh, as we age, um, you know, we tend to get wiser. And uh, you and I, uh, being in the spectrum of taking care of the end results of what uh, bad diet and bad nutrition and bad lifestyle uh, leads to, uh, we get tired of doing the same thing instead of tackling the main problem, which is what causes all this. And um, as, as you said before, we, we, we've done uh, taking care, of, still taking care of very uh, sick patients and, and uh, a lot of times uh, things that can be prevented so easily, uh, well, maybe not so easily, but can be prevented fairly well uh, at the beginning of the start. Uh, uh, we're tending to just address uh, at the end results of it. And I think that uh, doing these type of programs, uh, me and you are understanding that we need to hit the root of the problem. And uh, doing these kinds of programs uh, really educate, uh, we can address, me and you have gone through many conversations, personally and professionally, about what can we do to change people habit, habits that, that we ourselves uh, do. You know, we're, we're not any different than others. Um, you, by yourself, you, you've done an, an amazing job and, and breaking the routine that many of us have a hard time to break. Uh, and, and now we're, we're leading to these, uh, these type of conversations. So thanks for having me here. Yeah, great. So exactly. So he's, again, a cardiologist seeing the cardiovascular problems that occur. And I'm a vascular surgeon seeing the vascular problems that occur. So what he's talking about here or what we're discussing is the obesity problem in the United States, uh, probably from the uh, what we've called the standard American diet, which is highly processed food. And as we saw in the pandemic, this uh, sedentary lifestyle, especially as the digital landscape increases for work, people making their uh you know, online jobs, digital uh, digital companies. People are now behind computers, sedentary, they're busy, and they do what's convenient, which is fast food and processed food, which uh, therein we think lies the problem. So this leads to what is referred to as metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome means that you've become insulin insensitive and the, the, the key characters in this show are glucose and insulin or sugar and insulin. So a high sugar diet will not allow your insulin to come down. If your insulin is repeatedly high, you store fat. You need a low insulin to burn fat. So what whole foods do 
you know, good whole food, it's a different cascade of events that goes on in the body. The bottom line being your insulin is better controlled. Your blood sugar stays low. Blood sugar, if it's high for long periods of time, well, that's the definition of diabetes It's toxic. We have to dispose of our blood sugar as after we eat. And that's what skeletal muscle does a good job of that we'll touch on. So yeah, what are these complications from the bad diet? Well, cardiac and vascular disease is number one killer in the United States, followed by cancer, followed now by neurodegenerative disease. These are all diseases of inflammation. Fat causes inflammation. As we get fatter, the fat cells grow. They outgrow their blood supply. They become ischemic, which means lack of oxygen, and they become inflamed. Inflammation sets off a cascade of events that makes us chronically sick. So that's what we're talking about here. So the key is nutrition and exercise. And this is where people really fall down and have a hard time. And, you know, my experience as in, in bodybuilding, so, you know, Julian was athletic, uh, you know, he, he comes from a very athletic family, a very famous family, Dominican, they're professional baseball players, everyone knows them down there. And Julian's uh, been a star basketball player growing up. So uh, I played uh, varsity sports and uh, been lifting weights since I was 15. Uh, I'm pushing 59. I think Julian's already 60. So we're, you know, baby boomer, old dogs been around. Um, but uh, the, the key for the bodybuilding lifestyle is learning the nutritional aspect. It took me two years to get rid of a sugar craving. Uh, and now all I eat is whole foods. I eat a lot of food and can keep my body fat down just because I've been doing this for so long. So about weight loss, and, and Julian's been doing weight loss for a while. He's going to give us his experience in a minute. But the, the key thing that people don't take into account with weight loss, so just losing weight, say you're 50 pounds over, just losing the weight in and of itself has health benefits. The problem with weight loss, when you lose weight, you lose fat mass, which is what we want but you also lose lean mass, which is what we don't want. So lean mass is everything else that's not fat. Muscle, our internal organs, our bones. Uh, if we're losing a lot of lean mass while we're losing weight and when we're losing muscle, that's a problem. Uh, number one, because muscle is, a, is, an, is an organ, it's an endocrine organ. It really is responsible for the majority of our glucose disposal after we eat, which is why we want to do 10 minute walks after we eat. And if you lose muscle and you're elderly, this is what we call sarcopenia. Well, what does sarcopenia mean? And why is that important? If you can't get out of your chair without using your hands, that basically tells you you've lost your independence. You can't get off the toilet. And, and, and you go down this, this horrible algorithm. So, uh, Julian, you had a weight loss clinic. Uh, you still do, but you started the weight loss clinic earlier than I did. Um, before we get into the semaglutides and the M-Sculpt Neo devices that help us accelerate this, uh, what was your experience with your patients? Uh, what, what kind of medications were you using? And, and by the way, the whole goal is to get people off their pills <laughs> Uh, you know, if we have to do some short-term medication to get you there while we're trying to establish healthy habits, that's what we're talking about here. We're trying to get people off their pills. Uh, but what are the medications that have been used in, in the past? And, and uh, why are you excited about these new GLP-1 medications that we call semaglutides? Well, Jose, it, 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 addressing what you just mentioned here, if we look at the top three conditions, that are affecting baby boomers, people like us, and even younger people. And you look at one, cardiovascular disease, which you already <clears throat> expand on that. And the second one is cancer. And the third one, you have 
mentioned is osteoarthritis, hip problem, back problem, knee problem. You see a tremendous amount of that knee replacement and hip replacement that are going on. People would go, not going to work because of back problem or they can't play tennis or pickleball or, 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 or golf because of back problem. And all three of them are directly associated with obesity. I mean, it's just unbelievable that you, you mentioned those three. And of course, it goes to the bottom root of it, which is the inflammatory states that obesity causes. So uh, taking that into mind, uh, when I started my weight loss program, uh, went back was uh, 15 years ago, um, I noticed that uh, one of the things that I see on my population is that uh, nine out of 10 were either overweight or obese. And, uh, it, it, and I try to figure out a way that without having to poison them with medications, how I could change that risk factors. And I started looking at weight. You know, usually, traditionally, as you know, we, we tend to think, well, let the endocrine doctor deal with it or, or let the primary care doctor with it. And, and what I came to figure out, find out is that it's really a tough problem that not, there's not a specific. Now we got uh, bariatric doctors that are dedicated to weight loss and, and that's changed and it now has become more more expertise. But one of the thing is that we fail in our specialty to train people, professionals, on the problems of obesity. So when I started doing obesity, the first thing that I found out that was important was accountability. Accountability was the number one, that uh, the, the patients needed to have somebody that they could go and they could say, listen, uh, uh, he's going to check my weight. I really need to make sure that I'm following on the uh, on the program that he has me on and that I'm doing the proper thing. That's the first thing. The second thing is the drugs that I had available. Now, there has been a, I would say, a revolution regarding the treatments that we have for weight loss. Back then, I was using medications like Phentermine, which had a bad rep, and the bad rep goes to studies back down in the 70s that associated with valvular heart disease, and we later find out that that was not true, but it's a very great drug to decrease uh, uh, appetite. We also use ansiolytic medication. We used to use Xanax and so forth. As you know, anxiety is a big component of, uh, of, of binge eating and, and craving for food. So, and, and, and accompanied by uh, talking and accountability and, and educating the patient, uh, those were the, the tools that we had available. Today, you just mentioned an amazing drug that had come out and has been the semaglutide. Um, and, and also the, the SGLT2 inhibitors that are playing a tremendous role, which also helps a lot. And, uh, and a combination of those medications are making a tremendous impact on uh, weight loss. Now you see it all over the, the media. You see Elon Musk uh, using uh, semiglutide. You see the Kardashian using semiglutide. And, uh, and, and it's, it's so, uh, so big now that there's a shortage of the medication going on around the country. So it's fascinating that you mentioned that because it is a big tool now to help with that weight loss. Yeah, so the semaglutide, and before we dive in, uh, th this is a bridge or a supplement. Uh, and, and what we're trying to emphasize here that this requires a behavioral change, uh, but the medications can help speed things up and the device, the MSCULT Neo we'll talk about uh, can can help speed things up. At the end of the day, this all this stuff is is slow and steady, and, and it requires some discipline. And people need coaching. Uh, so you know, I've I've owned a gym for six years, and I'm trying to convert this to a medical gym for these problems because we see people just cannot adhere to a exercise. You know, except for gym rats, there, there's a, a, a people that do, but a big part of the population. They're in a gym for a month on a New Year's whim, and uh, it's done in two months when when life happens, as the saying goes. Um, and, you know, again, back to muscle is, is such a huge player in longevity is what the studies are showing now. Muscle strength or the strength of your grip. There are multiple studies showing now that strength is directly associated with reduction in all cause mortality. What's that mean? Death from all causes. So of all the things you can do, 
nutrition being one, but of all the supplements out there, all these magic potions and herbals and things that come in a bottle and people are trying to sell you the number one supplement and has been proven in study after study is exercise. You, you, you can't replace exercise. Muscle releases uh, uh, chemokines or, or the, you know, the, their products during exercise, hormonal type products that have a tremendous benefit on the, the, the body, such as things in the gut, which we talked about last week. We have a whole microbiome in the gut full of bacteria that are friendly bacteria. Uh, and just to give you the, the scope, we have 37 trillion cells for our body and at least another 37 trillion microbes that we coexist with. They help with our digestive process. They help with our food metabolism. Uh, and they also produce positive and negative effects to the body. So this, this whole world is really opening up and, you know, with the base of nutrition and exercise. So what do semi-glutides do for us? You know, why do they work? Why are people excited? It, it's, it's a natural hormone produced by the gut, uh, GLP-1. Um, it stimulates insulin and inhibits glucagon, which means, again, as we said, sugar and insulin are the main characters here. Low insulin will lower your blood sugar. Blood sugar is toxic. Blood sugar leads to fat deposition. But the, these medications, they, uh, they help decrease food cravings by their effects on the brain and the hypothalamus. They delay gastric emptying, which means it gives you a feeling of fullness or what we call satiety. There's multiple players in satiety, a, a, a well-known hormone called leptin, when leptin is released, it talks to the brain. It gives the feeling that you're full, meaning you don't keep eating. The opposite hormone, everything in the body is a yin and a yang. The opposite hormone, ghrelin, the hunger hormone, when ghrelin starts screaming, and that's from high insulin levels, that's when you start getting the cravings and you're eating. So you, we want high leptin and, and low ghrelin, and that's from low insulin. And that's from diets where sugar is not being introduced into the body constantly like processed food does. Processed food is full of sugars. Uh, whole foods are complex carbohydrates. They're not so much sugar. So the body naturally regulates better with whole foods. If you're eating whole foods, you don't even really have to watch calories nearly as much as you do with processed food. When you look at your intake, and this is what people, you have to be conscious of what you're eating. So there's what we call the macros, which are proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Protein, you eat it, gets digested, gets broken down into amino acids. Then we reabsorb it and reassimilate it. Our proteins are structural, our you know, skeletal or mass is mostly protein, uh, muscle, bone. It's important for our enzymes. It's important for uh, uh, metabolic processes. So protein is more of a structural thing. It's not really for energy use, although it can be converted to glucose and used for energy. Sugar or carbohydrate is the key player for energy. And fat is more of a storage of energy. So glucose is what, again, carbohydrates come in, we break it down, we absorb glucose. Glucose is the guy that gets broken down, gets into the cell, goes to the mitochondria in a process called oxidative phosphorylation. If there's oxygen around, it produces ATP. ATP is our energy source. Uh, that's how we do things. So based on ATP, so... Sugar is really the, the, the guy that delivers the, the electrons that make ATP that help us to function. If there's too much of it, it gets stored as fat. Fat is a storage depot for energy. If insulin is low, we can burn fat. If insulin is high, we will continue to store fat and get inflamed. So the semi-glutides help uh, 
you know, insulin, uh, you know, you know, better insulin monitoring while you're on the medication, which decreases the food cravings uh, and which allows the body not to store fat. So the, the studies that have been done is almost equivalent to bariatric surgery. If you're on it for a year, it's about a 15% weight loss. Um, and, and that's why people are excited with it. Uh, so it's a tool to get things started. But as Julian said, during the process, if you're on any medication, you need to be checking in with your doctor or diet coach, or it has to be a doctor prescribing these things. So it's not so much even diet coaches. You got to be checking in to the, uh, for adherence purposes. Uh, so you stay on your plan and you start developing what we ultimately want are the good habits of eating whole foods, uh, being cognizant of what you take in and, and starting to exercise. So any comments on that, Julian, the semaglutide before we get on to the M-Sculpt Neo? Well, uh, I was pleasantly surprised when I started using semaglutide. As you know, hemoglobin A1C elevation is one of the risk factors modifiable that you can modify on patients with cardiovascular disease. So we started paying attention to hemoglobin A1C uh, a few years ago. And with the introductions of uh, SGLT2 inhibitors, a lot of people see in advertising, Jardians and Farsiga, we started noticing that the in interfering with sugar metabolism was also impacting weight loss. That was the first time that I started seeing that the patients that I was putting on these for prevention of cardiovascular disease and treating their hemoglobin A1C, they were losing weight. And then also, uh, then came the Ozempic, the, the other medications, and, and, and that showed an impressive uh, reduction of weight. So if you compare it to the medications that we're using before, like Orlistat and Lorcasarine, Bupropion, and, and Fentermine, I mean, this is a, a 360 degree change, what is done. But the, the thing that you mentioned, the most important, and where I had the biggest problem is lifestyle modification. I mean, if you have somebody, that, especially in Miami, they're waking up at six in the morning, seven o'clock, they got to get the car because uh, the traffic is going to hit them. They get to work at 830. They're working like crazy till 430, five o'clock. They get back home at 630 with the same traffic. The first thing you do is you just sit on the couch, turn on the TV and just forget about everything. You don't want to do anything else. So lifestyle modification, it's the most important thing. I notice that myself, and you you tell me, I think your schedule is the same. If I don't get up at five in the morning, I can't do anything the rest of the day because it's tied up with the kids, with work and things like that. So lifestyle is the first thing that the people needs to understand. They need to change. How am I going to introduce one hour of walking, exercising? I mean, you don't need to go out there and do trial. Then you have the these great medications that are coming out, these great uh, tools like semiglutides and, and SGLT2 inhibitors, that we can help them with them. Accountability, understanding that when you're going to go to the doctor, they're going to tell you, hey, listen, you didn't lose enough weight. Uh, you're not doing the things properly. The diet, I mean, one of the problems that we have, and you see it in the hospital in our office, what is the simplest thing to take to the office? Muffins, bagels, uh, uh, empanadas. Things that or they're made of starch and sugar, and uh, you know it's hard to take fruits and or or take vegetables or or, or meat, and it's always the bad things. Same when we travel, we got a soccer game in Orlando. It's very hardly place where you can stop that you're going to find good food. It's going to be all sandwiches or burgers or or things like. That. It's hard to find a good place. So preparing your food, like I, I learned a very good lesson from you. You told me to say that you are a week ahead. You're already preparing your meals for the week. And actually that helps a lot. What, what am I going to eat at noon on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday and preparing the meal and then doing that change in your lifestyle, because it's really going to make a difference. And then we come in with these tools of the semi-glutides that work, as you said, and the, the, it's amazing. The, the 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 importance that glucose plays and uh, and uh, and weight uh, and, and 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 those changes plus these tools really help a lot in, in, in cutting that decreasing the obesity the obesity problem. Yeah, and, and that's where 
you know, why, why I like, you know, this podcast, so I put myself there as surgeon and bodybuilder. So, you know, bodybuilder, people think of, of the big muscle head in the gym, but what has taught me the most is, is how to eat. So if you want to start developing good habits, it, it starts with this word discipline. Well, what does discipline mean to you? And now we're getting into the whole mental game here. This is holistic medicine. It's about the human being. How do you, what tools can you use to get yourself to eat better? Well, for me, what discipline means is you give yourself a command and you follow it. That's what discipline is. So, for example, the way I started this 20 plus years ago was karate. So I've been doing karate for 20 something years. So I do it the uh, three times a week at five in the morning. So what does that mean? It means that I have now trained myself that at 4.30 in the morning, that alarm goes off. I'm up. I don't even think about it. It's, it's natural. But at the beginning, this little voice goes off in your head. Hit the snooze button. Just five more minutes. Uh, and then it's two snoozes and three snoozes. And a half hour later, what's that mean to me? You can't Give yourself a command and follow it. You have no discipline. You have to learn how to control these voices in your head and, and your mind. That's what all of this is. Once you kind of break through that, you're up every morning. Now you start, okay, let's get my exercise out of the way. Karate for me, starting out 25 years, 26 years ago, I've been doing this. I'm a fourth degree black belt. Um. It means to me, get 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 the, get the hard thing done. So I wake up, go to karate. My instructor busts my ass. I'm dead when I walk out of there. And that's behind me. The rest of the day is easy. Now I got to do is go to work and operate. Um, so years of that, then that's already built in and programmed into my routine. Then came my first bodybuilding show having to drop the carbs and lose the fat. Well, as we drop the carbs and lose the fat, we're trying to preserve muscle. Does this sound familiar? Bodybuilding in the elderly, you lose weight, you want to lose fat and preserve muscle. That's what we do to get on stage. So I've done 17 of these bodybuilding shows now, which means 17 diets, stripping down, getting cut to 6% body fat, and then you know, relaxing in the off season. But for me, it's a, an annual event, an annual discipline now that I do not to win shows, although, yeah, I'd love to get a pro card one day. It's more for the discipline of the entire year round th that I do. So what's that mean? I, I meal prep, as Julian said, all bodybuilders meal prep. I eat six times a day. I pretty much eat the same thing every day. I'm the most boring human being on the planet. The same food. And what's that mean? You eat what you crave and you crave what you eat. If you eat donuts, you crave donuts. If you eat chicken breast, white rice and broccoli, that's what you crave after a while. And that's this built in programming that needs to go on. That's where we ultimately want to get. Uh, but it's a lot of the principles are the same. And that's why we have a DEXA scanner here. So uh, as we put people through weight loss, the DEXA scanner, it's a simple little low-grade radiation. You lay on a bed for five minutes and we get all these numbers. And the important ones are your lean mass and your fat mass. So if you're dropping weight too quickly, yes, your fat mass is going down. Fantastic. We look at your lean mass. If your lean mass is dropping, that's not good. It's going to drop some. It's going to drop, you know, and the more obese you are, the, the less important that is. You just want to strip off the fat. But when you get down to your last 50 pounds, 40 pounds, you want to start preserving muscle with weight loss. That's when it starts getting a little tougher. So the DEXA scanner is a tool that we can use. The other thing that DEXA does is looks at visceral fat. What is visceral fat? That's the fat inside of your abdomen around your organs. Fat is not only deposited below the skin, it's deposited in your organs, in your muscle, and that's the most inflammatory fat of all. So on a DEXA scanner, we can see if your visceral fat is going up or down. Visceral fat is directly linked 
with metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease and cancer and neurogenerative disease. So that's another tool, something we can measure objectively that the diet is working for you. But at the end of the day, this is slow and steady. We can get things quicker with the medications, but these crash diets, we all know about yo-yo dieting. You drop the weight, you drop your basal metabolic rate. So now your energy requirements are lower than where you started. So when you start regaining weight, you regain weight quicker because you've slowed your metabolism weight loss. So I don't know if people understand what I just said, but it's called metabolic adaptation. As you start losing weight, your energy requirements lessen, your body becomes more efficient at using the little energy that you have. This goes back to, to cavemen. You know, you get the one kill, you eat the animal, and, and uh, you don't know when you're going to eat again. So our bodies are designed to store energy for the next meal. The problem now is in modern society, you got your meal all around you whenever the hell you want it. So we're just storing now the bad stuff by eating processed food. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what discipline means to me. That's what healthy eating means. It's really the game of reprogramming yourself to eat whole foods and be cognizant of what you're eating. Get your calories kind of calculated. There's all kinds of calorie calculators to get started. Me, I'm about 3,200 for baseline, just sitting here, I'm going to burn. When I want to gain a little weight, I go up to 4,000 a day. When I want to cut back, you know, I'll go under 3,000 calories a day. Uh, and I prioritize protein. So the first thing you want to do, you want to keep your protein requirements high, about one gram per pound. To say at 200 pounds, I want to eat about 200 grams of protein a day. Protein is four calories per gram. And really, because all protein comes with some fat, we just kind of cheat and call it five calories per gram because you're getting a little fat with your protein. So get your protein set first. Why? Protein is high satiety. You fill up with protein, you lose your hunger quicker versus eating cake. If you're eating sugar, you can keep pounding the sugar. You never get full, which is what people do. So prioritize protein. Protein has also been shown to help stimulate protein synthesis. Our metabolism means the, the constant process of buildup and breakdown. So protein synthesis, we make protein and we break down protein. That's what our body does. A meal stimulates protein synthesis. Protein synthesis goes on for a few hours, and then it drops off as the meal diminishes until your next meal. Protein synthesis is enhanced when there's high protein and exercise combined. So what does this mean? This means you're preserving skeletal muscle, which is, again, what we talked about. So once you got your calories from protein and your total caloric requirements, you can play with carbohydrates and fat. If you want to be keto, that's high fat, low carbs. If you want to, if you're a carb guy, it's high fat. I'm uh, sorry, high carbs, but you got to drop the fat to keep the calories, you know, even. So there's all kinds of way to do it, whichever. If you want to do the fad diets, they're really all the same principles. You can do keto, you can do vegan, you can do all these things. Vegan, by the way, plant based, uh, plant based protein. Yes, it's fine. It's just harder to get. It's not what we call as energy dense as lean meats. So your micronutrients, your minerals, things that are important for enzymes, you won't get as uh, well if you're only eating uh, just plants. You really should eat a you know well rounded meal. The other thing we talk about is metabolic flexibility. So if you're a carb guy, you're in carb burning mode, you introduce fat into your diet, your body's not ready to metabolize it. If you're a keto person eating high fat and low carbs, you introduce carb in the diet, your, 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 your enzymes aren't uh, propped up uh, to deal with it. So by introducing different things into the diet, you, became, you become metabolically flexible. It's an important uh, principle, just like keeping your microbiome diverse in your gut, keeping the bacteria and the microbiome diverse, they also deal with, uh, with foodstuffs differently. 
so that's a lot of information there that I just gave. Hopefully, um, uh, it helps. Um, any other comments, Julian, before we, we move on to the next device, Emscult Neo, that helps us more with... Oh, with yeah, function? I mean, what, what you explained there is a, a very detailed and, and excellent. Uh, um, but and the key point there is that losing weight is not the only goal. You need to lose weight and, uh, and preserve muscle. Uh, and and, and what, what, what I like about the program that that we're implementing is that we're going to introduce a way to build up muscle. I mean, you have a 60 or, or 50 year old guy who's never exercised that much and, and he wants to get it going and, and we're knocking 40, 45 pounds off of him. Okay. Well, how can we help him uh, build muscle? And uh, these uh, equipments that, that we're going to talk about more that, that also builds up muscle uh, and, 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 I'm pretty sure we're going to mention about sarcomere buildup and so forth in the next uh, few minutes. But uh, I wanted to mention this great article that came out two weeks ago by the American College of Cardiology uh, demonstrating the benefits, uh, the longevity and low uh, morbidity, low uh, incidence of, uh, of disease on patients that did weightlifting compares to did not. And it was impressive, uh, uh, the difference between the two. So yes, preserving muscle is as important as losing weight when you're in a program of losing weight. Uh, and uh, I mean, not everybody can be like Jose. If all my patients were like Jose, then I probably wouldn't even have a job. Uh, I mean, he's one of the guys that can discipline. But uh, for these individuals that have a hard time, uh, these are the programs, implementing programs like this, where we're helping them not only lose weight, but at the same time, helping them uh, preserve or build up muscle is important. Yeah, so there's this uh, uh, another, rev I call it another revolutionary device. The, the first generation has been out for a little while, but the, the second generation or M-Sculpt Neo uh, is, is pretty interesting. So we, we have a, a couple here. Um, I actually did eight treatments right before this last bodybuilding show that I did uh, just to, to, to see how, how, you know, how, how well it worked, uh, what it felt like, uh, so I can discuss it. But basically, it's, uh, without getting too technical, is synchronized radio frequency energy, something called HIFEM. Uh, basically, the device delivers energy. It's very controlled. It's not painful. Uh, it's safe. Um, you put it on. Let's just go with the abdominals. So it's this device goes on your abs. It delivers energy to your abdominal muscles, and uh, a 30-minute treatment basically is comparable to doing 10,000 crunches. And when you put this thing on and start dialing it up, you feel it. It's uh, it's super interesting. Um, it took me a while, like my seventh or eighth treatment, before I could get it up to actually 100% strength. I started at like 20%, like, whoa, this... So it's an interesting device. The other piece is that uh, the radio frequency energy. So, you know, you have the skin, the fat, and then the muscle. It's the only one that I know of that also helps burn or, you know, melt away slowly the fat underneath the skin. So you're getting a dual benefit. And there's many uh, clinical trials that uh, when you start working with this device and you start uh, working with a company that they are provided to you, and the data is pretty convincing. Um, the bottom line from the data, uh, you know, using uh, they use ultrasound and, and many things to, to see. Uh, but basically, the fat thickness was reduced about 25% at three months after the average of four treatments. And the muscle thickness was increased by about 25% at three months. So it's kind of this holy grail where you're building muscle and losing fat. Um, again, it's not designed to replace a healthy diet and other forms of exercise. I, I look at it as a supplement. There's this other thing that we can do for, for example, like patients that Julian, Julian mentioned. Uh, somebody who's frail, they're not going to go to the gym and lift weights, even though it's been shown that 80 and 90 year olds doing resistance training you know, controlled with a personal trainer to prevent injury. Somebody knows what they're doing. They coach an 80 or 90 year old. There are 
There is evidence showing that they also build muscle, build strength, and benefit um, and maintain their independence. An elderly person, we have all seen it, and uh, undergoes a hip fracture, you know, falls down, breaks her hip. If they don't have muscle, muscle reserve, their mortality skyrockets versus somebody who breaks her hip and has that muscle reserve. You're old and frail and you end up in the ICU with pneumonia. You don't have skeletal muscle. You're pretty much, you know, you're not going to get out of that ICU alive. You have muscle. All the, the evidence is showing that you're more equipped to fight off infection and get out of that ICU. So this is the type of uh, data that we're learning. And that's why we keep repeating the importance of muscle. So this is a, a device that, that can help uh, to kind of, you know, stimulate people who are long or people that are less inclined to go to the gym and, and work out. Um, so these are, you know, two tools and, and uh, uh, we got a few minutes left. I want to be mindful of everybody's time here. We're, we're about uh, 41 minutes in, so we'll start wrapping up here. So really uh, my <clears throat> message would be um, obesity is about, you know, being overweight is, is unhealthy. We know this. Exercise is incredibly beneficial. We know this. A new, you know, good nutrition, and you've heard it your whole life, vegetables, fruits, lean meats, whole foods is beneficial. We all know this. This the problem is people don't do it. Um, and probably need coaching. You need centers that can hold you accountable. You need to be helped to develop the good habits. It's a slow game, but Everybody wants things fast. So semaglutide medication and devices like Emsculpt Neo can kind of help spring things along, maybe to encourage people when they start seeing results quicker, that they start really uh, want to start developing the good habits that are required. Um, Julian and I know the long game on several accounts. I mean, to become a surgeon, I put in four years of college two years of grad school, five years of general surgery training, and two years of vascular surgery. That's 17 years after high school. So if you're not used to looking at the long game, you, you get discouraged. But when you're playing the long game, you got to, you can't, you know, you run a marathon, you don't do the 26 miles all at once. You kind of break things up in your head. Here's goal number one, two miles in, then I turn over here and I got to get to there. You break it down. Uh, so that's uh, that's how we we try and do things here with, with good coaching. Um, so, Julian, anything you'd like to summarize for people to take away before we say? You basically said that these programs are designed to get them over that hump. I mean, there's nothing more than when you knock off 25, 30 pounds of a patient, most of them take off from there. They don't want to go back to where they were before. They're buying new clothes. They're feeling good. They're feeling more energetic. They knocked off 10 years off their so th these programs are not designed for, for life. These programs is to get you trained and, and, and get weight loss and, and get you excited about a new life. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, and, and you need to do it the right way. I mean, losing weight without the proper uh, uh, training and, 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 and avoiding muscle loss and so forth. So uh, that's what I like the, about these programs. I, I had a patient that, she lost 30 pounds and I saw her about three months ago and uh, she kept losing weight and you see her now and it's, uh, she's as fit as it can be. And she told me that it was that after trying so many things, when she got to that 30 pound and she felt good buying new clothes, she just kept doing it. So what I like to tell people is not how bad obesity is for you, is how good you're going to feel once you start getting better and losing all that weight. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Well, we are uh, 45 minutes. Uh, hopefully, people found this helpful. We will keep doing webinars. I'm sure I'll invite Julian back uh, uh, with some more data and more in, in. all these things out. 
Yeah. And Julian, thank you for uh, joining me. And um, thank you. So the other thing, we will be recording this uh, and putting this on a YouTube channel. I'm in the process of, of, of doing that, or my team is. Uh, like I said, uh, Julian and I were kind of, uh, you know, old boomers and we're trying to keep up with these, uh, you know, our kids, the millennials and the ex Gen X or Gen Y. I can't even keep track of all this stuff. But we know we know we got to do this social media stuff nowadays, which we uh, I think we despised it early on, but I think we're coming around. Uh, so this stuff will be on recorded and put on a YouTube channel. We'll get this channel going so you can look at it on demand and review things. If, if uh, this was a you know a little too much information to swallow at once, you can go back and look at it and break it down a little bit. All right, okay. thanks, Jose. All right, thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time.